Hey everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. I am here at the bench and I was right in the middle of reviewing this bad boy. This is a circuit specialist CSI 305 benchtop power supply with not one but two 30 volt 5 amp outputs as well as a 2.5, 3.3 or 5 volt 3 amp output. So it is a triple benchtop power supply. Now the reason we're here is because one of the things I was thinking about with this video is for many of us, the ATX power supply became our first benchtop power supply. You'd hack one of these things up. Maybe you would cut the wires apart. Maybe you would use one of these cheap little things off uh, Banggood or something like that. And you would kind of work up your own benchtop power supply. And that's exactly where I started. I'll probably toss a picture up here right now if I have one. I kind of made a pretty sweet one that I was pretty proud of. But one of the things I'd always heard was that the power that comes out of these things is kind of junky. And so um what I decided to do is since I'm in here testing power supplies that I would go ahead and test this one. So I'm gonna fire it up and I have this um car turn signal bulb up here which is pulling about a two amp load. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bench meter on the 12 volt pins and just make sure here. So you can see this 12 volt power supply is giving us 11.9 uh, volt. So, I mean, you know, we're not getting 12 volts like we're expecting under load, but, you know, in the range. So 11.908 volts. So I'm going to drop that off there. Now, the question is, is how clean is the power coming out of here? So if you think about it, uh, when you are trying to rectify DC voltage, you know, you start with your little sine wave and you cut the top off and you try to refactor that into as straight of a line as you possibly can, but it just never works that way. So it's not a matter of if you're going to have ripple in your voltage, you're going to have ripple in your voltage. It's a matter of how much and the less ripple you have, the less variance you have in your voltage, uh, the cleaner the power is. So I've got the scope hooked up now. Ideally, I would be pulling these probes closer to the actual power supply, but for these purposes, uh, I think we'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this thing run. And as you can see, we've got the waves sort of jumping around there. Now, in a perfect world, this would be nearly straight, but I'm going to go ahead and pause it. And the way I have this thing set up is in my trigger menu, I am set for the edge and I'm I have the source as AC50, and then I'm coming over here to the channel menu, and I've got my uh, coupling set to AC, and my 20 megahertz bandwidth limit on, where course is fine, my probe is at 10x, and so um, as we come over here to the cursor, we're gonna take the cursor of this thing, and we're gonna bring it, uh, the top, the end cursor, up to the top of that wave right there, Ish. I'll go down one. I'll give it a little bit more uh, flexibility there. And then we're going to take the other cursor, the start cursor, and we're going to bring that down to the bottom of this wave here. And you will see that this is telling us that our ripple is 432 millivolts out of 12 volts. So that is a lot of variance. If you had one of those cheap uh, AliExpress or Banggood buck boost converter type things, you might be getting 100 to 150 millivolts of ripple at this voltage, but here we are getting 432 millivolts of ripple at a nominal 12 volt voltage. That is huge. That is huge. And so it may not matter on some of your devices. Some things may be able to handle that fluctuation. Who knows? They may be able to run 12 to 30 volts and not even care or 9 to 30 volts and not even care. But when you're looking for 12 volt power, uh, 432 millivolts is a lot of ripple. And I understand the thought. You would think this power supply is made to power a computer. So you'd think it has to be putting out good, clean power, but they just don't. And this is not the cheapest power supply I have. It's a fairly weighty one. Um, it's a decent power supply, not a great one. Maybe I'll hook up a thermal take or something like that and we'll see if there's any difference. But I would like to take a look at running the same test on a real bench power supply. Okay, so we are going to perform the same test with the uh, Hantec DSO520P and the CSI3105, and we're gonna increase the current until we get a solid 12 volts out of there. Um, let's see here. 
All right, so you see we're setting a constant voltage of uh, 12 volts. The uh, benchtop meter is reading 12.01 volts, so we are dead on. And then we are going to freeze this and we're gonna come in here and increase our volts per division on the scope. And now we're gonna come in here to our uh, cursor menu and we're gonna set the start, which is the bottom one of the wave. Uh, so basically, one thing I should point out is there's, there's two factors that are going on with the power. There is um, noise and there is ripple. And the way we're set up now, we can really only measure ripple. And the primary reason for that is that there's a loop on this ground clamp. And because we are sort of using this, it's a little antenna, um, it's adding some of this noise. Now, some of the noise is coming from the power supply, but some of it is also coming from the probe. So I'm not judging or even set up to judge the actual noise, which would be these little spikes up here to figure out what is coming from the power supply and what is not. So we're gonna go by roughly the top of the wave to the bottom of the wave. And as you can see there, we're at 16.8 millivolts. And even if you wanted to be a little rougher on the test, and bring this out here and say, you know, say that's the top and the bottom of the wave, you're still at 22.8 millivolts. So we're talking, you know, factors of 20 uh, plus, you know, um, we're almost, what, 500 millivolts on the ATX power supply versus uh, 22.8 here. Now, what does this matter? Now, the thing is with electronics is, you know, if you're doing an Arduino or something like that and you're powering an Arduino, it may not be that big of a deal. But when you're working with electronics and something just isn't randomly working, you know, you don't know if that plus or minus half a volt difference uh, could be causing your problem. Could be the reason why it crashes every once in a while. Could be a reason why your readings aren't what they expect. And so that is why, um, whether you buy this one, this is not a sponsored video, but if you buy this one or a different power supply, you want a quality power supply for your electronics. So, hey, I appreciate your time and thanks for watching. Have a great day.